My name is Nathan McNeil, and I'm doing a presentation on the Lear's macaw, or otherwise known as the Anodorhynchus leary. These macaws are large parrots with bright blue plumage. They have yellow rings around their large black eyes, and the breast is greenish blue. They have a yellow chin, and the underside of the wings and tail are black. These birds have a strongly hooked beak and two toes that point forward and two toes that point backward called zydoactylus feet. They can weigh up to two pounds as adults, and they can also grow up to three feet as adults. Their preferred habitats include shrublands and savannas. More specifically, subtropical slash tropical shrublands and dry savannas with sandstone cliffs and large stands of lacuri palms. They are endemic to northeast Bahia, Brazil. They are known to breed in two colonies in two places, the first being Toca Veja Canudos, and the second be Serra Blanca Jaramabo, south of the Raza de Catarina Plateau. Between the two colonies, there is a combined area of 31,200 kilometers squared of resident area. The macaws feeding and roosting areas stretch across the municipalities of the following. These birds do not migrate. However, there is a constant decline in habitat area slash quality of habitat. And quoted by IUCN Red List, the population is congregatory and dispersive. Macaws roost in groups of three to four birds until they're paired up and macaws leave to create their own nest. These birds forage in trees and on the ground. Their diet largely consists of lacuri palm nuts. Some individuals may eat up to 350 nuts a day. They are also known to feed on the following. These birds do not interact with other species except for the plants listed previously. Food scarcity is a problem. This is because their main food source, the curry, is being destroyed by humans. And the only predator that these birds have are humans. Although the macaws are eaten locally and nationally in Brazil, the main problem with humans are the things that we do. These impacts are all negative. The current main limiting factor for population growth is believed to be reduction of food resources, especially lacuri. Other factors that have been attributed to the species' historically declining population include habitat loss by clearing for agriculture, whether it be for cultivation of maize or large-scale livestock grazing. In fact, lacuri palms used to cover around 250,000 kilometers squared, but now have been vastly reduced. Vegetation is also commonly cleared by burning, which tends to have little control. A major fire could eradicate most of the food supply for the Toca Veja Serra Branca population. Firewood and lumber also pose threats to habitat loss. Another thing that humans are doing is hunting and trapping. Live capture for trade, domestic and internationally, continues to pose as a threat, but has been significantly reduced in recent years. Some characteristics of past and current population numbers. A study in 2010 found that only 228 individuals, which is 20.3% of the 1,125 in the world, were actually reproductively active meaning that 79.7% of the surveyed individuals were sub-adults. It is still very likely that all these figures include large portions of sub-adults. The species underwent a long-term historical decline due to trapping, but population estimates remained fairly stable following its rediscovery in the wild in 1978 until the mid-1990s, when numbers began to increase rapidly. While this may partially reflect improvements in surveying, there has also been a genuine increase in population, which is due to the intensive conservation efforts. Speaking about conservation efforts, current efforts include infiltration of trading networks and improved surveillance at breeding sites, which results in the arrests of poachers, smugglers, and collectors. The Toca Veja Serra Blanca cliffs are now guarded. Research has been undertaken on the lacuri palm and the curry palm seedings have been grown and planted. Comprehensive monitoring is underway along with an education and awareness program and ecotourism. There are plans to study the species feeding ecology, reproductive biology, movements, and habitat use. 
Local people have been recruited as guards and ecotourist guides or trained to participate in censuses. A scheme to reimburse farmers for maize lost in macaws was begun in 2005. And last but not least, there is a captive population and breeding program going on. Some possible future conservation efforts could include continuing annual population censuses, creating further protected areas within the species range, restoring degraded areas of the habitat, enhancing existing nest sites to prevent premature fledgling of chicks, continuing to compensate farmers for crop losses, incentivize the planting of lacuri and other food source plants, continue environmental education programs, promote sustainable methods of lacuri management, Continue and expand the program of growing and planting seedlings up in Lacurie. Enforce legal measures, especially through local patrolling, to prevent trapping. You can also increase severity of the penalties for those who are caught. Monitoring trafficking of birds, both within the country and internationally. Evaluate potential sites for the release of confiscated and captive bred birds throughout historic range. And confiscating all the birds from trade integrating them into breeding programs. It is important for us to save these Lear macaws. Why, you may ask? Well, they play an invaluable role in the ecosystem. They are messy eaters, and because of this, they spread seeds through forests by discarding them while eating, as well as in their droppings. This helps replant and rebuild the environment around them. Keeping the ecosystems healthy.